Thank you. Um, Senator Markey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was in Congress in 1991, and uh, we had a robust debate around the need to give President Bush the authority to remove uh, Saddam Hussein from Kuwait. He received that authority. We removed uh, Saddam from Kuwait. That's 30 years ago. It's, it's ancient political history. So that 1991 authorization just has to go. Uh, I was in Congress in 2002 when we debated the authorization for use of military force in Iraq. Of course, we know that the war ultimately was fought on a lie that President Bush and Dick Cheney, his entire administration made, which was that there were nuclear weapons in Iraq. They knew there were not that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. We know that they lied, and the whole premise of the wall was a big lie, uh, that we were going in to remove nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction from that country. So it, it's time for that authorization to go, as Senator Cain has said, and others. We are now in a completely different posture uh, with the Iraq uh, government. Uh, we're no longer at war with them. Uh, and again, that war was based upon a complete and total fabrication, a complete and total lie uh, that was told to the American public with incredibly negative uh, consequences for so many tens of thousands of families across our country and um, families in the country of Iraq as well. So we have to move on, I think, to the conversation about where we are today. And one of the questions I'd like to ask is, um, that I welcome the Biden administration's announced decision in February to end its support for offensive operations uh, by the Saudi-led military coalition in Yemen and for its commitment to a political solution that ends a six-year civil war that has the tragic distinction of being the largest humanitarian emergency on the planet. However, uh, the United States government is continuing to support uh, the Saudi forces responsible for um, immense human suffering in Yemen. Uh, Ms. Krauss, the United States maintains contracts with the Saudi Royal Air Force to maintain its fighter aircraft. How does the administration make the distinction between supporting offensive and defensive operations when we know that the Saudi Air Force is carrying out strikes in Yemen using U.S. maintained fighter aircraft? Um, Senator, our, as you say, our, our armed forces are providing um, advice and limited information for defensive and training purposes only in connection with that conflict. And we're always um, very mindful of legislative um, mandates and restrictions to make sure that as we provide assistance to our, um, to our partners, um, that we make sure that the law of armed conflict you know, is appropriately complied with. Um. Well, let me ask you this question. Um, in, in Oman, um, uh, I, I know that the Biden administration is attempting to get the Houthis uh, and the government of Yemen to return to the negotiating table, table. What leverage does the United States and its partners have to urge the Houthis to end its military offensive uh, and return to diplomatic talks? Uh, Senator, uh, as you note, uh, the president uh, took a, a step to end the support to Saudi-led coalition forces uh, offensive actions to basically say it is time to bring this war to an end, uh, given the devastating humanitarian impact that you noted. Um, we do continue to believe a political solution is the only way to resolve this and lessen the humanitarian crisis. We have urged uh, countries like Oman that has relations with the Houthis uh, to put pressure on them to, in fact, come to the table. I was just in Oman on uh, my latest around the world uh, travels uh, and uh, encourage them to do just that. Uh, we have an envoy, Tim Lenderking, who is just nonstop in his going to those countries who can affect all the parties here uh, to try to reach a political resolution which is the only way out of this nightmare. And, and what success are we having in getting uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates to pay their fair share? 
to take care of this humanitarian crisis in Yemen. Uh, there is an ongoing effort to do that with some success, but quite frankly, Senator, the real answer to this is the one that you are implying, and that is to have a political resolution and bring any conflict to an end. Okay, thank you.